Okay, we are in chapter 10, section three, day two, converting data to relative frequencies. In the purple textbook, volume B on page 204. Data can be converted to relative frequencies in a two-way table so that the results can be easily compared, especially when the numbers are large. Consider, and this is only from the textbook, not in your packets yet. We'll get to page 34 in a minute. Consider a factory of 1,984 workers. The two-way table below shows the number of male and female workers and whether or not they are late for work. There are two ways of converting these data into relative frequencies. Recall that relative frequency of an item is the number of items divided by the total. So you're finding a percent. The sum of all the relative frequencies has to be one. So all the percents have to add to one in the table. So the relative frequencies in the t table below show the distribution of male and female workers among workers who are late for work and the distribution of male and female workers among the workers who are not late for work. So males who are late, about 43%, females who are late, about 57%. So we took the numbers in the table and put them over their total. So this box on the prior table only had the 140 in it. So I'll go back and you can see that 140 males said they're late for work. Out of the total of the 323 people that were in the survey. So 140 out of 323 and then 183 out of 323 for the females. So that's where those numbers came from. And yes, 43% were males that were late, 57% were females. If you add that together, that's 100%. Oh, and notice that the relative frequencies are in decimal form. These also could be in percent form. And 43% and 57% does add to 100%, which equals the decimal one. Um, in the survey, 35% said they were not late for work, yet 65% said they were not late for work in the females. So, the relative frequencies in the table below show the distribution of the workers who are late or not late by gender. So the first table shows those people who are late and the distribution of males and females. So it broke it down by gender who are late and not late. Now it's workers who are late and not late by gender out of the total males that were in the population. So that 715, they're out of the total males, 140 out of 715 said that they were late. So that's 20%. 183 out of 1,269 said they were late, that's 14%. 86% said they were not late, 80% in males said they were not late. So we're going to look at these tables. Um, number, uh, now I'm on page 34 in your packets. A random sample of 25 students from Arts and Science College were surveyed as to whether they enjoy reading science fiction novels. The results are shown below. So there's 25 people. So I know the total has to be 25. And, and as I scanned through, A was for art, S was for science, science fiction, Y represents, yes, they like to read science fiction novels. Oh, S is for science class. And yes is for liking to read science fiction novels. And no is for don't read science fiction novels. So I scanned through there and I saw that four people um, said arts, yes. And nine people in the science said yes. For a total of 13 people in the arts and science that said yes. So there were 13 in the arts and science that said yes. So I just calculated all of these, and I got 13 of them all together, and then put them in the correct column, either arts or science. In the no, eight people said no that were in the arts. Um, four people said no that were in the science. So that's a total of 12, which 13 and 12 does give me my 25. 
So four and eight people, 12 people were in the arts class, and 13 people were in the science class, which also adds to 25. What percent of the students enjoy reading science fiction novels? Well, the total number of students surveyed was 25. The number of students who enjoy reading science fiction novels is um, 13 out of that 25. So what percent is that? 13 25ths equals 0.52. Multiplying it by 100, you get 52%. So 52% of the people in the survey enjoyed reading science fiction novels. Describe the association in these college students. Well, from the table it appears that science students enjoy reading science fiction novels and arts, people who are in the arts classes, do not enjoy reading science fiction classes. That's what that survey says, that the science people um, enjoy reading it more than the arts people do. So four to nine, right? A random sample of 20 adults were asked to indicate whether they watch soccer. So random, good idea, if we're taking a sample, 20 adults were asked to indicate whether they watch soccer. The results are shown. So we have males and females, F and M, and yes and no. Do you watch, like watching soccer? No, you don't like it. Summarize the above data in a two-way table. So you have to draw your table. I already drew mine in. So you have a big space here. So I'm going to put gender in my rows and watching soccer in my columns. So yes, they like to watch soccer, or no, they don't like to watch soccer. And this is total. They are female or males. So my two different populations, two different groups. I'm keeping track of their gender and do they watch soccer. So two females said yes, um, seven females said no. So there were a total of nine females scanning through this. And males, there were eight that said yes, three that said no, so a total of 11. There were 20 total people in the survey. So I did calculate correctly, 10, 10. Total across the row is 10 people said yes, 10 people said no, 50-50 split for a total of 20. In the females, it was nine people um, total that were females and 11 people that were males. What percent of the adults watch soccer? So of the adults, so 10, total adults say they like soccer, I'm getting that number right here, out of 20 in the survey, well, we all know what percent that is, it's 50%. What if they ask the question, what percent of females, what if they ask that, liked watching soccer? Well, that would be two out of the 20, and that's only a 10%. What if it asked how many males didn't like watching soccer? So that would be 3 out of 20, which would equal 15%. So they could have asked lots of questions. Here I added a couple extra ones on. Um, describe any association between the gender of adult and whether he or she watches soccer. Well, obviously we can see that more male adults watch soccer. Right, there were eight of them compared to the two that were females. Um, and yes, I can finish that with the compared to female adults. That's a conclusion I can make from this chart. Um, next page, page 36. From question 1 on page 137, okay, well, it's right here, though. They, had, they gave you the information. The two-way table below shows the performance and fuel consumption ratings of the 70 cars. We did this in a scatter plot, chosen at random. So um, you have the chart right here. Find the relative frequencies. Relative frequency is you're trying to find the part to the total. So how many 
say that, you know, how many of them were of low um, performance compared to the distribution of the fuel consumptions within each performance rating. So in within the performance rating, so meaning poor out of the total uh, in the poor column here. So 11 out of 20, what percent is that? That's 55% or 5,500. So I'm going to answer it as a decimal. In the medium is 1 out of 20. Well, that's 5, whoops, medium, medium, 8 out of 20, sorry. 1 out of 20 was the high. This is 8 out of 20. So 8 out of 20 is 40 hundredths. 1 out of 20 is 5 hundredths. Yes, you can put the zero there or not. So I'm staying within the column. Um, for the low um, medium performance, that would be 8 out of the total of 28 here, which was about 29 hundredths. Yes, I'm rounding a little bit. 14 out of 28. Well, that's exactly 50%, 5 tenths. And 6 out of 28 would give me a relative frequency of 21 hundredths. In the good, um, low fuel consumption, good rating would be 2 out of 22 now is my denominator, or 1 11th, or yes, that is 9 hundredths, rep a tenth, but we're not going to show it as a rep a tenth decimal. 720 seconds would give me 32 hundredths, and 13 out of 22 would give me 59 hundredths. And yes, I just used a calculator to help with that. So going down the column, you can see that 55 hundredths and 40 hundredths and 5 hundredths will add to 100, which is 1 as a decimal. Um, so there's a um, conclusion we can make here. The fuel consumptions of cars with poor performance are mostly low or medium, low or medium, um, yes, low or medium. Most of them are the fuel consumptions of cars with poor performance are low or medium. Some blank, now it's, that's got a period there, so now starting a new thought here. Of the cars with medium performance require medium fuel consumption. So medium performance and medium fuel consumption, that would be half or 50%. So I'm going to use half here because you don't want to start a sentence with a number. So half of the cars with medium performance require medium fuel consumption. Most of the cars with good performance, so most of the cars with good, most, this would be the most, because it's higher than 9 hundredths and 32 hundredths, of the cars with good performance would require high fuel consumption. Part B, the re find the relative frequencies to compare and describe the distribution of performance ratings within the fuel consumption. So now I'm going across the chart, and how do I know that? Because my total of having 100%, or a total of one for my relative frequencies, is in the across the row. So I see it here, the one. So I'll start the first cell for you. And in the, going back, low now, low going across over the total would be 11 out of 21. So my first 11 out of 21, so you'll need a calculator to actually divide 11 by 21 to get my 52 hundredths to fill in that box. I'm going to leave the rest for you to do here on page 37. Make sure that your frequencies total to 1 um, and that you then fill in the um, conclusions here at the bottom. And that's it for today.